One of the examples I wanted to show was another way of using the find look at rotation. So here in my world, I've got some boy cameras, um, which do drop into the water and then float. But I wanted to be able to track my boat. And of course you can use tracking for a camera, but I wanted to have a bit more control over this dynamically. So my buoyancy boat has got just a little bit of code on it to help propel it forward. So very simply, we are taking the static mesh and on event tick, which is important, we're getting the forward vector of the actor um, just using two axes, so two dimensionally X and Y. We're not worrying about uh, the Z forward vector here to help propel the actor forwards in the direction it's facing. And the static mesh is the boat. We're getting the center of mass for the location and we are multiplying it. So this is the amount of force and therefore determines the speed. Now I've had to put it in a minus because the static mesh was the wrong way round when I imported it. So that's why that's the minus value. You can see, so the boat's in that direction, but the X axis is in that direction. So if I just put a minus value, in the multiplier then it moves in the right direction just to explain what's going on there so let me just play so you can see i've got these cameras which are on a buoyant cube showed in an earlier video and as i switch through them it's actually tracking the boat position so as i switch around that's all happening nicely i've then on the r key also got a means of moving between each of those cameras so we're getting kind of panning uh, passing shots i've only got three cameras in this at the moment there could obviously be many or i could continue to spawn cameras um, at an offset distance around the boat which i've not set up but there we go the boat is leaving us as oh here we go we've got a different camera angle but i wanted to show you a couple of things on the construction script so you can see here when i select boy camera 2 and move it around you can see that the preview is updating because I set up on the construction script, a script that helps um, keep the boat bang on in the middle of frame based on the pivot point of that mesh. So here on the construction script, I'm getting the actor location, which is my boy camera. I am then getting the lookout rotation between this boy camera and my pipetted actor, which is just an actor reference, which I've got instance editable, and then I've pipetted the static mesh of the boat. Now on the event graph, I'm doing that on tick. So I am getting this location and the pipetted location, and then we are basically pivoting the camera around on the z-axis so it tracks the boat but you can see that i have kept the original values of the x and y um, of the pipetted actor because stabilization actually negated any of the effect of the buoyant camera one thing that you'll note if i select my three cameras and pin those cameras the camera was keeping the boat in the middle of the frame but now if I move the boat, it's not in the middle of the frame. I can move it in the world and those three cameras don't update. But if I come back to my boat blueprint and come into the construction script, and now you'll see I have got a boy camera, a ray variable, which is instance editable. So when I've come to my main world, selected on my boat, I've then got access to that array I've added three elements one two three click 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 and then just selected those cameras in my world so let me just compile so now when I select my boat and move that in the world you can see that the cameras are rotating because it's keeping the static mesh of the boat bang in the middle of the frame so that then enables the 
camera to keep track of my static mesh as it's moving through the world. So it's quite fun. One of the things that I realized though as I did this was that yes, you can sometimes over engineer something. So, you know, is stabilized was a Boolean that I added and I was thinking, oh, well, I could stabilize the camera, but that's completely over engineering it because I'm doing the calculation to cancel out the buoyancy when all I need to do is just not make the camera buoyant in the first place and it would save all that calculation. So you can be too clever sometimes <laughs> for your own good. And it was like, hang on a minute, what am I doing? So anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. Let's have a look at a couple of things while we're here. So I do have a water setup actor where I'm doing a couple of things. So this is the thing I wanted to show you really was when I'm pressing R, which is kind of randomly selecting one of the cameras and then using the set view target with blend node to move between those cameras. And there you can define a blend time. You can ease in or out in terms of the camera move. So you've got a sort of fluid motion. And I am basically using my boy camera array, which again, I've just made instance editable so that when I come into the editor, I've just done this manually because they're already in the world. So again, one, two, three, adding them in. And then using this code to move between each of those pawns, moving from the camera of each and then possessing that pawn. So I'm using them as pawns and then possessing each of them. So in theory, once I've got possession of a new pawn, I could then navigate that. I've not set that up in this instance, but that's potentially switching between cameras and then having camera control because each of those are pawns that are being possessed by my universal get player controller. Anyway, I hope that's of use. So I hope that video is of use. If so, please do like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive any updates. And thank you for your support.